This is E! News, live from Johannesburg. Good evening to you. I'm Gareth Edwards. This is our top story. The death toll in the Indonesian earthquake and tsunami rises to about 800 as the president visits the worst affected areas. Here at home, Deputy President David Mabuza has described the late Environmental Affairs Minister Edna Molewa as one of the ANC's strongest minds. He was speaking at a prayer service at their family home in Pretoria. We'll bring all that sport news a little bit later. First, Indonesian President Yoko Widodo has surveyed the destruction caused by a 7.5 magnitude earthquake that triggered a tsunami. The death toll from that disaster has now climbed to over 800. He visited Palu. It's a coastal city on Sulawesi Island where most of the confirmed deaths have been recorded. Authorities though are now bracing this evening for much worse as reports are beginning to filter in from other areas which are cut off, particularly Dongala, that is a region of some 300,000 people and is even closer to the epicenter of the quake. There are fears the death toll could lead into the thousands. Well, Pope Francis has expressed solidarity with the inhabitants of Indonesia's island of Sulawesi. Authorities are fearing that the number is going to climb as those rescuers continue to struggle to reach the outlying communities cut off from all kinds of communication and help. Speaking to tens of thousands of people in St. Peter's Square for his Sunday address, the pontiff said he is praying for the dead, the injured and those who have lost their homes. Dozens of people were reported to be trapped in the rubble of two hotels and a mall in the city of Palu, which was hit by waves as high as six meters following the earthquake. With most of the confirmed deaths from Palu, authorities are bracing uh, for worse from those outlying areas, which, as I mentioned earlier, are closer to the epicenter of the quake. Well, let's come back home now. Free State Police have set up a task team to investigate two separate shooting incidents that left four people dead in Fixburg. In the first attack, three armed men stormed a night vigil and began shooting at the mourners. A man died on the scene and a woman was killed by a stray bullet. The group then went on to attack and killed two men in their home on the very same night. A total of six people were wounded in both attacks. Earlier, we heard from the provincial police spokesperson, Wutanti Makele, and asked if border officials have been notified of possible suspects trying to flee the country. I said uh, the team is working collectively to make sure that they, they drill deeper into what could have happened and make sure that you bring the perpetrators to work. You'll, you'll realize that the uh, units like crime intelligence and uh, take this and TRT, there are people with skills and we have selected people whom we know that they can uh, infiltrate the situation that side. But we don't have to rule out the fact that there are agreements which are governing, uh, especially the fugitives who might have crossed the border so that we don't find ourselves uh, maybe violating some of those uh, agreements which were made. Deputy President David Mabuza has described late Environmental Affairs Minister Ed Molewa as one of the strongest minds in the ANC. He was speaking during a prayer service uh, at Molewa's Pretoria home as part of the 10-day mourning period. Mabuza says her death has come as a shock. She passed away last week at the age of 61 after a short illness. Molewa will be honoured with memorials nationwide. Well, Rahima Musa Hospital in Johannesburg says the origins of the bacteria that killed nine babies at the institution earlier this year are still not known. That's despite an extensive investigation by the National Institute of Communicable Diseases. Nine infants died at the hospital after this bacterial outbreak. The institution's acting CEO, Dr. Fru Benson, says the hospital attended to 43 cases between the months of March and July, and nine of those were fatal. He says the outbreak at the hospital ended back in July. Well, not much is uh, known and left, of course, in the wake of the nuclear bomb in Hiroshima in 1945. Uh, but incredibly, some trees survived the blast, would you believe it? Some surviving seedlings have been planted in over 60 locations around the world. Parl in the Western Cape is the latest to get one such tree. In the name of peace, Pilati Satusa has the story. They're called Hiroshima trees and have been planted all over the world as a symbol of hope. Now, one of the 170 surviving tree species will have roots in the Western Cape. Uh, the first thing that encouraged people who were devastated by this uh, disaster is 
the sprouts of the trees which are coming out from the burnt soil. And it is a powerful message saying to the people, as if it is saying to the people, you must live, you must live, you must be strong. The tree is a symbol of peace and resilience. It comes from a place which has suffered a deep trauma, you know, it, it uh, devastating. Even in times of severe and absolute devastation, that life still survives, you know, the, that beauty can still be redeemed. And uh, Africa has uh, many challenges. And then uh, together we, we are part of Africa. We think we are part of Africa. We have a common aspiration for the peace and prosperity of Africa. The hope is that South Africans can take this lesson and mirror its hopeful message in their everyday lives. Piladi Sutusa, Paul in the Western Cape. And coming up after the break, South African-born billionaire Elon Musk will be stepping down as the chair of Tesla and will also pay a $20 million fine. Those are the agreements and the terms of the agreements that he reached with U.S. regulators. Welcome back to E! News at 7. The Zimbabwe government says it is in full control of the cholera epidemic. That's despite the growing number of deaths from the disease, mainly in the country's capital, Harare. So far, 49 people have died and over 7,000 have been infected since the waterborne disease broke out earlier this month. Meanwhile, authorities in the country still banning all public gatherings. That remains in place. Our Zimbabwe correspondent, Pendai Dube, gives us the latest. Harare, the southern suburbs of Glenview and Budiriro, have remained hotspots of the cholera outbreak. Aging water infrastructure and the lack of investment in the sector has constantly placed millions of residents at risk of waterborne diseases. But Harare Mayor Herbert Gomba believes his team is in control of the situation. Uh, very much our interventions have been working well and uh, if you look at the numbers you can actually agree with me that uh, it's under control and we are working hard to eradicate the problem. So many people have been assisting us since the outbreak started and um, uh, we are talking of uh, World Health Organization, um, with the WASH people have been coming, corporates, Econet, Liquid, so many people have been coming forward to, to, to actually help and some have been providing us with water bowsers for us to be able to give our people clean water. Some residents of Glenview are not convinced. They say authorities haven't done enough to keep the disease and the problem won't be going away too soon. This area, we are in first drive area, Glenview area 8. This area it, is, it has been affected for a long time. Since 1980s, I was very young. I used to saw these swages running, running in the roads. Ah, Papa got to Omera, but situation here, I got to Omera. We go to go to see. We go to the Ramakura Ramanya Shadamari. Because my trust is that I don't need to go to home. My toilet, the chicken, the chicken, the chicken, the chicken, the chicken, the chicken. Meanwhile, main opposition leader Nelson Chamisa led a cholera awareness campaign in the affected suburbs. Zimbabwe has suffered its worst cholera outbreak at the height of the country's cash crisis in 2008. A total of 4,000 people died and at least 100,000 people fell ill. Pindai Dewe, Glenview, Harare, Zimbabwe. Well, South African-born billionaire Elon Musk will step down as the chair of Tesla at Tesla, I beg your pardon, and pay a 
$20 million fine. Those are the terms of an agreement reached with U.S. regulators. Now, the deal follows Thursday's decision by the Securities and Exchange Commission to sue Musk for alleged securities fraud. To remind you, it relates to an August tweet in which Musk said he was considering taking electric car maker Tesla off the stock market and into private ownership. He wrote, and uh, I quote, that he had funded secu or funding secured for the proposal. Shares in the company did briefly rise after the announcement, uh, but later fell again. The SEC said those claims were false and misleading. Musk, however, does remain uh, the CEO of Tesla. Brazilians pride themselves on being people who always see the best in any situation. We're just a week to go before close to 150 million Brazilians decide who will take over the reins of that country. Spirits among some are high, while others are downright glum. Reporter Michael Apple and cameraman Joe Camane are on the streets of Rio de Janeiro with this story. It's tough times in the samba capital of the world. The economy is struggling to grow and the upcoming election is dividing the country. While there's lots of presidential candidates, it's going to come down to Jair Bolsonaro, a conservative right-winger who's out in front in poll predictions and trailing him, Fernando Haddad from the center-left. We hit the streets of Rio to see what this Bolsonaro craze is all about. With Bolsonaro today in Brazil, we have hope. He's a military man. I totally support him. I use it to show my support for Lula on Facebook and social media, but that's changed. Bolsonaro is trying to take Brazil back into the past. He doesn't fight for democracy. For the last 30 years, he's worked as a federal deputy and has done nothing. It's completely amazing that you have this one candidate who basically has his own merchandise line. Dare I say it? It kind of feels like a cult. When the curtain comes down after the elections, Brazilians will have some way to go to bridge the many social divides, kickstart their economy and put some positivity back into the character of every Brazilian. Michael Apple in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. After the break, we'll have your weather details for your week ahead and then 120,000 distinguished gentlemen from around the world take to their bikes to raise awareness for health issues affecting men. It's been a sunny and hot Sunday across South Africa with a few thunder showers still expected to form over parts of the northern and eastern Cape. On Monday, we're expecting sunny and hot weather over the eastern half of the country with thunder showers forming yet again over parts of the northern and eastern Cape. It'll be a cooler day over the western parts with lots of cloud building up ahead of a cold front which moves in on Monday night. Slightly cooler weather is forecast for the northern Cape, still in the mid-30s though for Uppington and Prisca with isolated thunder showers from Uppington through to Colesburg. Partly cloudy and dry over the western parts. Quite a bit of cloud moves in over the western Cape where we can expect a cooler day. 23 for Cape Town, 26 as we head towards Swellendam and George at 24 degrees. Hot as we head towards the eastern Cape with up to a 60% chance of thunderstorms. 34 for Somerset, East and Umtata, 27 for East London. Sunny and sizzling hot throughout Kwisud and Atal. Quite a few of those highs in the mid-30s over the interior. Durban topping 30 degrees. Sunny and warm at 27 for Emma Kazeni and Ermelo, 31 for Bombella. Warmer temperatures are forecast for Limpopo with a sunny and dry day, 28 for Polokwane, but with the rest of those highs in the low 30s. Warmer temperatures are expected into northwest with a predominantly sunny day, 30 degrees for Mahiking and Clarkstorp, and we stick it around that 30 degree mark for Bloemfontein with some cloud expected over the western part of the Free State. It'll be a sunny start to the week for Harting with most highs at around 30, Soweto topping 28 degrees. On Tuesday, thunder showers are still expected, mainly over the southeastern part of South Africa. You'll see hot weather over the northeastern part, with a particularly cool day in the south and the possibility of rainfall. And that continues through to Wednesday, with thunder showers from Kimberley through to East London and some rain and cloud into KZN. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a great week. Thank you, Candice. Now, over 120,000 people put on their Sunday best to take part in the world's most popular motorcycle event. The Distinguished Gentleman's Ride raises funds and awareness for health issues affecting men, particularly prostate cancer and mental health. 
The streets of New York, London, Sydney and even Johannesburg were filled with motorcyclists for a seventh year. Mia Spies was there. Items such as suspenders, cravats and ties aren't usually expected at motorcycle events. But it's mandatory at the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. This global event was held in more than 650 cities on Sunday. There's six cities involved in South Africa. Uh, this is the Joburg side of it. And we're raising money for uh, prostate cancer uh, research and for mental men's uh, health awareness. Uh, every year we've got a million men dying from uh, suicide and prostate cancer. So we're doing our part to uh, help raise funds for that. More than 1,400 neatly dressed gentlemen and ladies took part in Johannesburg. This event globally started in 2012. Uh, the organizer Mark Haver from Sydney started it there and uh, he saw a picture of, of Don Draper from Mad Men and he was beautifully dressed in a suit on a classic motorcycle and he thought it would be a great idea to get a lot of people dressed like that, uh, all dapper, on classic, classic style motorcycles and to use that as a fundraising and an awareness of men's health campaign. Neville van Niekerk came all the way from Germany to support the cause that is near to him. I myself have uh, bladder cancer um, in remission at the moment. Uh, my family, my father, a lot of my family uh, have passed away also from starting with prostate cancer and that. So if I can at least put the message out to the people out there and say, guys, go do the finger test. It can be helped, can be cured. And it also if you're in depression and you want to talk, we're out there all the time. The target is to raise at least 86 million rand worldwide. Mia Spies, Johannesburg. My thanks to the team behind the scenes. Have a good, have a good evening. Bye-bye.